Got a small job to do, small laid job. These are some parts, or this part right here, are off of a forklift axle. And a while back in my channel, probably about at least two years ago, I think it was, I released a video called Forklift Axle Repair. And I'll throw the card up there in the video and throw it in the description box in case you didn't see that if you want to check it out. These are the parts out of that video that I did. Uh, luckily, the damage isn't as bad as it was then. In that video, I had to line bore the housing and, and make some steel bushings to go in there to bring it back to size for the kingpin to fit in. And then this was one of the parts that go in there. And so the other side has been worn out now. And Joe's been trying to limp along until he get to the point where he could tear it down and work on it because they use that forklift every single day. So. Uh, he, he's got another forklift now, and now, so now he's fixing this one. I believe it's a, uh, a T-Rex or a Trex or something like that forklift. It's one of them all-terrain. Uh, looks like a lull. <clears throat> so he says the, uh, the housing's okay. It's not wallered out like the, like the last time. But the, uh, this right here, this is a seal journal. This one is good. That's what it's supposed to look like right there. You got a seal journal here, and I don't remember if uh, this is a bearing journal or if that just fits the housing. I can't remember now, but <clears throat> it's just been so long. I haven't even gone back to look at that video <laughs> that I'm telling you about, but I got some good sizing right here. So Joe welded this up. It was really eat up, that seal journal. It was just totally gone and wore out. So he built this up, used a MIG wire, and I'm gonna set it up in the forge all. We're gonna get it indicated, and I'm gonna turn this back and make it look as close to this one as I can. So this will be the first job that we go down to the Monarch and use the, uh, the new four jaw chuck. So let's go, let's go get started. Put a little use on the uh, little Miller Fall grinder that I'm working on right here. This is what I'm doing here. Trying to knock that spatter off and clean the rust and stuff off of it. Okay, we already got the chuck set. I measured this as about four inches in diameter there. And I've got the jaw set about four inches. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it in here, try to get it even just by feel, just barely snug the top one. Not too shabby there. I'll go ahead and just snug them a little bit more. And we'll go ahead and we'll start here. So there's a couple ways you could indicate this. You can use these machine surfaces. That's what you want to true up on. Since we've got two turned areas, this one is a little bit messed up, but I think we might be able to use it. So we'll try it. Indicate here and here. And you'll indicate here on the OD, get it true. And then out here, what we do is bump it around and try to get it lined up parallel with the spindle. You could also indicate on this face right here. Man, that ain't bad at all. That's only 10 thousandths right there. I can tell you already, I'm liking the way this chuck feels. It has a very smooth, very smooth friction to the threads. This is, I'm not used to it at all. It's, uh, it's much better, much better than the old chuck. 
I'll go ahead and spin them numbers around, make it a little bit easier to read anyway. So, you know, we got a thousandth right there, but we're going to have to do this again. So, all right, now I'm going to move it out here to this end. Okay, not too bad. I'm going to take my, this hammer here, it's a little bit big for this. But we'll try it. There's a couple ways you can do it. You find your low and you can tap the flange. And it'll kick it around. Them jaws really got it. It's, uh, it's not wanting to move very much. We'll try it like this. <laughs> I got a little too tight on the jaws. It ain't wanting to move. See that? Alright. Let me loosen it up a little bit. Now we're getting somewhere. All right, now I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and move it back and see how far we are on this side here. Loosen and just barely snug because I don't want to over tighten it again. All right, that's about a half a thousandth, so I'm gonna go ahead and come back out here to this. And if I get it real close, we might verify it on the face there and see. About a half a thousandths. About a half a thousandth, so just about there. Yeah, it looks looks good enough there. So I'll set up a tool and we'll start doing some turning so here's our good piece that we're going to copy now this is all uh, inch dimensions so that diameter right there is one and five sixteenths and then our seal journal is two inches now back here I think this just fits this is going to fit up inside the hole there so we'll just, you know, we'll just try to copy all those. One thing that I do need to do also is set this shoulder length. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You know, you can do this right here with the back of the calipers. It looks like it's going to be 13 sixteenths. You can do it like this with the bottom of the calipers. Now to get you close. You can also take a depth gauge. Try to hold it nice and square and come down very gently with soft fingertips and I'm getting looks like 815, 816 so we'll just call it 815 I think what we'll try is this high speed tool it's actually a Rex 49 high speed steel we'll try that first these high speed tools are are excellent tools to use on welds like this because oftentimes when you're cutting a weld it's it's an interrupted cut and you're hitting sometimes slag and it'll mess up the tool bit so 
using a tool like this is handy because you can just go over there and regrind it. You're not busting your expensive carbide inserts. But <clears throat> there are times that your weld is very tough and high speed just doesn't want to cut it. So I don't know how this is going to react. We're about to find out. I'm assuming this is some cast steel, and I know Joe used um, just regular MIG wire to weld that up. I'll use some cutting oil on it too. Just going to take it nice and easy. I'm not in a hurry here. I'm going to just dial in 50 thousandths, make a little pass across there to get rid of the high spots. All right, so that worked out pretty well so far. It's not beating and banging. It seems to be soft, not hard and steel. I've got rid of the high spots there, so I'm not worried about coming in there and, and um, taking too hard of a cut somewhere. So what I'll do is kind of get an idea on how much we need to reduce that. We're gonna be around uh, two inches 30 or so. Looks like about 200,000, somewhere in that neighborhood. So I know I can go ahead and dial in another 100,000 and make another pass here. Looks like it's time for a new brush. Go over there and find one. I uh, finished getting this OD roughed in and we're not down the size yet. I need to go ahead and turn the shoulder back first. So I'm just going to run this tool up very gently by hand with the hand wheel here until it just touched. All right, I just felt it touch. Got a little resistance. Now we'll come over here and using this mag backed indicator, I'll come up and I'm just going to try to square up that little disc there. And we'll set a zero. I'm going to move the tool back out of the way. I'm cranking it back. And we'll go ahead and count out our... Um, we'll go to uh, 810. That way we got a little bit to clean up on the face, like five thousandths. Alright, so there's our... All right, there's our 810. Then go ahead and reset it. So back to a zero. All right, so that's where our shoulder will be. It looks like it's gonna not quite clean everything up, but that's, uh, should work though. I think what I'll do is just turn it. I just touched off there and I'll just, I'll just go in and I'll turn it back to my zero. I'm not using a, a fast feed either. I got it set at 5,000 feed. Try not to um, push it too hard here. Alright, so we'll do one more on camera here. Just I'm just gonna keep doing this until I get down there to to that diameter.
All right, we got it down into our target range there. And again, we're gonna make this uh, right at one inch 312, which is one and five sixteenths. So I'm gonna mic the weld. And we're at, let's see, 25, six, seven, eight, one inch 339. So we've got a little ways to go. I sped it up some. I'm going to go ahead and take ten thousandths. Now what I did before I started that shot, I forgot to tell you, I slid this tool out and I used my hone and I went ahead and re-honed that edge to help leave a better finish on there. It looks like it's leaving a nice finish. Nice finish there. So let's go ahead and we'll finish this out. I'm gonna dial in the remainder of what we need and just let it path, all, uh, you know, run all the way across this path here. So we're at uh, 321 and a half. Yeah, so it looks like we got nine thousandths. All right, so I'm gonna back off here. I'll run in five thousandths. Change my feed direction. And I'm gonna clean that face up five thousandths. Okay. All right, we're getting there. We're almost done. I'll just blend that with some emery cloth there to let's see where I hit my. Looks like three twelve and a half to me. All right, so our tool's still set where we just cut our shoulder. This zeroed out. Our next shoulder length is going to be 9 16 back. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to move it 9 16 which is 562. Right there, we'll reset this back to our zero. Okay, and this is going to be a 2 inch diameter journal right here. This one's measuring like 1.998, but it's not critical because this is bigger than that. So, we'll go ahead and check it with our brown and sharps here. Looks like we got 45 thousandths. Take a twenty thousandths pass and see how. Let's see how the tool does here on this. All right, get a measurement here. Let's make one more cut. Twenty-four. 24 thousandths. Just trying to keep the, the where it's cutting wet with the cutting oil, help maximize our finish there. Okay. Yeah, 
It is right on it. Two inches. Well, let's go ahead and finish out our uh, this diameter right here. Let's go ahead and mic it. I believe we said it was going to be 28 thousandths over two inches. Yeah, about 28, 29. Thirty-one, two, three. All right, so we're going to take three. We're going to take four thousandths, and after that, we're going to blend it. So it's just barely touching there. I'm going to go ahead and back it out and stop that. You can see like that thousandths were a little bit we were running out. But we'll just hit it with some memory. We need to go ahead and hit a, hit a chamfer here and polish it up. We are going to put a chamfer, you can see on this one it's got a, got a nice lead in. Matter of fact, here's one of the beauties with the multi-fix. You can kick it around 9 degrees if you want to change your angle a little bit. So I'm just kind of eyeballing that angle. And you see that set back a little bit so that maybe a lip seal can go over it. Kind of cleaned up the weld there too. All right, there we go. We got her all polished up. There's a couple spots right there that didn't clean up very good. I'm not real happy about, but I was hoping that they would on that last cut. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave those and uh, let Joe determine whether he's happy with that or if he wants to uh, spot that and uh, re-weld them and me set it back up again and turn it. <clears throat> but I think it'll work. I'm gonna go ahead and. Take it out of the machine here. All right. There we go. Nice little job for the new four jaw chuck.